three, two, one. We are live now on the Excel Turbo channel, uh, streaming also through LinkedIn. And we are going to have a great interview with Roger Govier from Wales. And let me put us on the screen right now. Uh, hello, Roger. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Cristiano. And it's good afternoon here. <laughs> yeah, good afternoon for you. Good morning here. We are starting uh, another good day with a great interview. It's a pleasure to have you here. And thanks for accepting the, the invitation. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of things to, to discuss here and also uh, an awesome awesome demonstration and uh, we, we have been talking uh, on the behind the scenes and, and I'm always excited to hear your journey your story uh, it's really fun and full of, of great moments and spots that we could sharing could be sharing with everyone so uh, you are from Wales right Yes, I'm from Wales. I live in the southeast hmm. corner of Wales, and um, I live on a small farm. It's 40 acres, or about 18 hectares, uh, and it's right on the banks of the River Usk. And the River Usk flows down from the Brecon Beacons and joins the Bristol Channel at a place called Newport. And we live on the banks of the Usk, a beautiful spot. Mm, let me see if I find here. I'm here on, on, on Brazil, on Rio de Janeiro, and it's here in the middle. And let me find Wales here. So everyone, <laughs> let, let's depart for, from Rio de Janeiro to Wales. And then... I'm not sure can. we'll let you in at the moment because of the virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it's a beautiful place. Let me put here on the screen. So, uh, at the side of of England, it's part of United Kingdom, yeah. close to France. Here, Ireland. Cool, cool. We have some pictures here. It, it's a beautiful place. I, I'm writing here in Portuguese as well. País de Gales is, is the way that uh, Brazilian people. Uh, hear the the name of wales uh -huh. and then i I'm, I'm putting in portuguese as well it's yeah. a beautiful beautiful place yeah, lots of history beautiful can i tell you cristiano i've only sure. once been to rio as uh, many years ago and um i landed there and a friend of mine collected me from the airport and it was slightly drizzly and um, he was taking me to stay at a friend of his, an apartment which was just away from the beach of Ipanema. And I'd heard all about this lovely beach and the beautiful girls, and I was looking forward to it. Anyway, the rain persisted throughout the day, and we drove past the beach of Ipanema, and there wasn't a beautiful girl to be seen anywhere. And the next morning we got up and we flew south uh, about a thousand miles to Rio Grande do Sul to where his farm was. And we spent a week there and then I was installing some software on his uh, farm computer. And uh, the plan was we were then gonna go to Florianopolis to his apartment and have a few days on the beach and then back up to Rio for a couple of days before flying home. So he said, don't worry, Roger, you'll see all the beautiful girls on the way back home. But unfortunately, <laughs> I developed food poisoning. I was in a hell of a state. I didn't see the beach at Florianopolis. I had a week in bed. I got up. I managed to get onto a plane straight through changed in uh, Rio and straight back to London. So I never ever did see the beautiful girls on the beach of Ipanema. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that you you visit Rio. It, it's a good su surprise to hear from you. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is my hometown. Uh, I used to, to live in, in Sao Paulo recently as well and New York, but uh, Rio de Janeiro, it's it is my city from the heart and is a good surprise to, to know that that you you came here uh, some time ago oh yes i went i went up to christos and i saw the beautiful view from there and uh, uh, i did a bit of sightseeing but it was in drizzle not in bright sunshine <laughs> <laughs> cool cool we, we have some friends here watching you uh Ligia is here good morning Lisha Galvão. Hi, Lisha. <laughs> we have Christian Angel from Hi, Rom Romania. Hi, Hi Christian. <laughs> uh, Rahim uh, from Pakistan. Hello, Rahim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have also Alan from London. Uh, oh. Hi, Alan. Hi, Alan. Good to see you again. Yeah. <laughs> his, his MVP our, our now. Our new MVP in the UK. We. Yeah. <laughs> you deserve a party. <laughs> yes, yes. Cool, cool. We have also Alexandre Cabanas. Hello, good morning. Good morning, mm -hmm. Alexandre. Yeah, yeah. Lisa didn't know about the, the Rio de Janeiro visitation, so so she said <laughs> that it's nice as well. And we have others coming. We have Danush here from India. I can see the flag. Oh, so hello. Good. Hello. So this is an international live. Cool, 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 very cool. I have some spots here because I, I know a little bit your story, but it's always good to hear again and in more details and share with everyone. So uh, you have a company uh, that is technology for you, right? It's your business. That is my business, yes. <clears throat> But yes. uh, that I only set up in 1996. And um, I do consultancy work for people all over the world, all based on Excel. I've made yes. my living entirely from Excel since 2016. Yeah. Nothing else. <laughs> uh, it, with some VBA, of course, as well. So uh, uh -huh. yeah, not just Excel. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I came into computing by a very, very funny route. Um, at school, I was uh, I was into the biological sciences, um, chemistry, botany, and zoology, and uh, I <coughs> went off to university at Reading to read agriculture with a view to uh, specialising in crop husbandry. Uh, that was my intention because botany was the great love in my life. And first year in university, I was introduced to agricultural economics and statistics. And wow, I just really, really loved both of those. And uh, I spoke to the university people and said, look, I want to switch courses. So I changed onto an honors degree course in agricultural economics and business management and my <clears throat> my tutor a great guy uh, professor barry dent he um he was very interested in linear programming and i became interested in linear programming and also we did production economics and uh, this kind of cash flows and all that sort of thing and that was great fun and for my honours thesis, I decided I was going to do a linear programming exercise to optimise performance on the university's pig farm. Well, the computer back then took up the whole floor of the physics department. Massive, massive building. <laughs> and it had a huge 8K of RAM. 8K. Can you believe it? Anyway, <laughs> it, 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 we, we cannot imagine in, in the recent times, but it, it's so, so, so little memory that that we cannot install anything that we knew nowadays. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and of course, you, you weren't allowed to go anywhere near the computer yourself. So I had to prepare all my data on punched paper tape, five channel, and um, you would 
prepare that and you take it up to the computer lab and they would run it overnight and you go back the next day to pick up your results, usually to find that it had failed to run. Uh, because in those days you had to put two spaces between every character and you'd probably missed out the two spaces somewhere. So you had to read through this rules of tape looking and I, I could read this five channel tape just like reading a book, you know, you could just do it. And then you'd cut and splice and put bits in and then go and run it again. And this went on and on and on. <clears throat> and eventually, when they did get it to run, they found it was far too big. The model was far too big for the computer. So I had to cut it down into four sections and run it as four individual runs. And of course, the results were not additive. So I, this was, I found this out about two weeks before I had to write up my thesis to hand it in. So it was a bit of a mess. But anyway, that's where my first interest in computing yeah. came from. But you broke it? You broke the computer with, with the well, program? It was too big. It was too big. <laughs> <laughs> Today, yeah. on my laptop, it would just fly through. But there we go. <laughs> yes. We, we have, yeah, we have so much power in the palm of the hand today. It's funny oh, to it's see this. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, but, it's fascinating. Uh, anyway, I, 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 when I <coughs> left university, I went to join a company uh, called Farm Planning and Computer Services, who were trying to use linear programming then for optimizing whole farm businesses. Uh, unfortunately, the company was about 30 years ahead of its time and uh, it failed because uh, the market wasn't ready for all of this stuff. But the very interesting thing was that we were based up in Cambridge and uh, we used to rent time on a big IBM mainframe computer down in London. And a few years ago, I happened to be sat on a coach over in Redmond sat next to Charles Williams going out to campus to the day's meetings. And we were talking about our backgrounds. And Charles said to me that when he left university, he went to work for IBM in London. And I said, what did you do there, Charles? He said, oh, I was fairly mundane. I was just loading these big machines with data coming in from clients and then sending out the results. And I said, oh, that's interesting. I said, we used to use IBM in London. He said, what was the name of your company? And I said, Farm Planning and Computer Services. He said, I used to help you with your stuff. So amazingly, although we didn't meet up until a few years ago, back in 1968, I was producing stuff in London, in Cambridge, sending it down. Charles was loading it on the machine the other end and sending the results back to me. <laughs> what a quiz. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and, and I, I see that you were production and development manager in, in a company as well. And then oh, yeah. I, 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 I joined a company that was uh, doing genetic improvement of pigs. And mm. uh, so I'd, I'd stopped with all computing then because we didn't have desktop computers back then. And I. Um, I then also got given the marketing responsibility and then eventually I, they made me the UK general manager. And I got to that position at the age of 29. And my boss was only 40. So I thought, where the hell do I go from here? There's nowhere to go. So I got fed up with working for a large organization. So I decided to go out and do my own thing. So I set up my own pig farming business. Yeah, but before that, you you got uh, a promotion in your 29 years old, right? You, Sorry, I you, didn't catch you, that. Before you, you leave, you were promoted uh, with 29 years uh, for general manager. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. I was. I was general manager for a while. Yeah, and... I know it. It's, it's an impressive <laughs> achievement. <laughs> well, yes. I happened to be in the right place at the right time, you know, it was just lucky. It was a, <laughs> it, it was a small business that had just been taken over by a very large business and it was growing mm -hmm. like topsy. And um, I just happened to be there at the right time. So 
I was lucky. That was all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I. So then you later you left and, and opened your own pig farming business. Yeah, I did. And then, uh, of course, I got set that up, and then I put a manager in charge of it, and I went back to doing some consultancy work in the pig industry, and I sat on the uh, steering committee of the Meat and Livestock Commission here in the UK. And um, in 1978, microcomputers sort of first appeared here in the UK, and I thought to myself, well, if anything needs monitoring, it's our pig production. And so I sat down and taught myself to program, and I wrote a program just for monitoring all the performance of the pig herd and the pedigrees and the selection and everything else. And when I'd written it, I then found other people wanted to buy it from me. So those in those days, a computer sold for about three and a half thousand pounds. And uh, there was a profit margin of about 700 pounds. So I thought, well, if I'm selling programs, why don't I sell computers as well? So to cut a long story short, I packed up pig production in 1983, and I've been in IT ever since. And, and, and do you know some, some words in Portuguese because of this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the very, very first person who wanted to buy the program from me was Dr. George Susalima in Ponta Delgada in the Azores. And uh, I knew George because he was a customer of Pig Improvement Company where I'd been working before. And he said, oh, Roger, I must have this for my herd in the Azores. <laughs> so I sold it to him and I went over there and installed it and taught his staff how to use it. And that was the start of a very, very long relationship with them. And I used to go over there every year. And George said, well, it's fine. The inputs to be in English is okay, but the staff reading the reports want to see them in Portuguese. So I sat alongside him and we translated it all into Portuguese. But I'm afraid I didn't learn really much Portuguese. I'm very sorry, but I only know <laughs> words like Varasco, which is a boar, and Porcash, which is a sow, and, and Ninhadas, which are the little little wieners. And <laughs> <laughs> so all my knowledge of Portuguese is all about pig production. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. And, and all this, this story, this, this happened in the early days of the accounting software before the spreadsheets, right? That's right. And um, <clears throat> I then, I liked a, an accounting package which had been written by some people, uh, which was um, like a database. Instead of being separate ledgers, with a sales ledger, purchase ledger, nominal ledger, this guy had produced something where he said, look, we've just got one set of transactions, and ledgers are just different views of that same set of transactions. So, yeah, that's pretty good. So I bought a copy for myself and I became an agent and I sold it along with the other stuff. And after a few years, the guy from that company said to me, look, Roger, why don't you bring your products, because I'd written a few more things by then, and your customer base and come and join me and uh, let's try and build up this whole business together. So I did. Um, I joined him and I became the commercial director of the program uh, above the company. And he was the MD, but functionally he was the technical director. So he, he then did all the software writing. And even though I could write software, I concentrated on the, the, the marketing and the selling. And we built that business up to be well, the second biggest in our sector in the UK. But... Um, Although we didn't have the most clients, we had the best clients. We had all the biggest farms, the big estates, all the big land agents in the UK. We, uh, we got a by royal appointment to Her Majesty the Queen because we supplied Royal Farms Windsor and we supplied Sandringham Estate. Anyway, in 1996, we had an offer from 
another company to buy us out. I was wanting to return home to Wales anyway. I was living down in Hampshire in England at that time. And so my co-director and I, we sat down and said, that, yeah, why don't we sell out and go our own way? So that's what we did. And I came home. I set up technology for you. And I'd already started playing about with spreadsheets. Um, the first spreadsheet uh, was uh, VisiCalc, written by Dan Bricklin. And then I moved on to SuperCalc, and Notice 1, 2, 3, and Ball and Quattro, and Multiplan, which was the forerunner of Excel from Microsoft. And then eventually on to Excel, and I worked with every single version of Excel right up to the very, very latest with the dynamic arrays. So I've had a long history with spreadsheets, a long history. Um Amazing, amazing. Uh, I got some pictures here for, from some moments of your story. Uh, <laughs> together, some MVPs. You got the, the MVP in 2007, right? 2007, I was first made an MVP, yeah. Very proud I was too. And uh, I was renewed on the 1st of July for my 14th consecutive time. Yeah, so, well done, well done, well deserved, yeah. Cool. Uh, again, again, I was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, uh, lucky is a consequence of a good work of of the excellence, and you you are doing this for all this time. It, it's so cool to to hear the this story. Look at the the comments I, I was putting here on the screen, but. Uh, Alan is, is saying, what a story. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It is amazing to hear this because we are talking about the, you you are talking about uh, the early days of, of, of the spreadsheets and even before this. So it's so cool to, to hear the, uh, this is amazing, amazing. And let me put here on the screen something that I like. This, for example, this is a recent contribution uh, together other MVPs, but I can see you here at the corner and and you have yeah, I, other... I, I, I'm the one with a very red face. I think I must be very embarrassed that day. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they cannot see my, my mouse, mouse pointer, but it's right below the insights yeah yeah red red face <laughs> funny 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 yeah that was uh, that was good fun doing that yes uh, uh, i have this picture here with brad young and and, and bob onless yeah this is from 2000 20 2011 no no 2012 2012 yeah so cool so cool you're here at the right corner yeah so cool. If, if you guys, can you go back to that picture where I'm in that corner? This here? This, yes, this here. Yeah. Uh, I think the person next to me with the cap on, I think that's Smitty. Oh. Uh, no, 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 it, it isn't. It isn't. Smitty, no. always wore, Smitty always wore a cap like that, but he's not in that particular mm -hmm. picture. Yeah, but there there is this meeting on, on an, another picture here below, and I, not on this side, but this here maybe. I I saw this meeting on on another picture, on in one of these, this here, this here, this meeting. Yeah, yeah. Said new what uh, what happened uh, recently. Oh, Paul Smitty. Um... Smitty is an absolutely great guy, really, really great guy. He, um, he became an MVP just before me, having answered thousands and thousands of questions on Bill Jelland's Mr. Excel forum. And um, we first met up in 2008 at the summit and became great friends. And he, he jumped ship um, in 2016 and joined Microsoft. Here in the UK, we have an expression of poacher turned gamekeeper. He'd, <laughs> he'd gone from our side across to the other side. And uh, unfortunately, he developed uh, throat cancer in December of 2017. 
uh, has gone through a huge amount of treatment, got given the all clear in 2018, and unfortunately it returned and he, he died about uh, two weeks ago, just over two weeks ago. And tomorrow is a virtual memorial for Smitty. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to come to that and join in on it, you'll, if you look on Facebook, you'll find the links there to go to it. And I'm fortunate I've been asked by Cindy and Campbell, his wife and daughter, if I do one of the one of the presentations. And that's going to take place at uh, 1 p.m. PST tomorrow. Yeah. So, it, it, very, very so fast. He was, he was a wonderful guy. Wonderful guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this makes makes me think that we have to to leave something for the others because everything is temporary and all that we can do is leave uh, always a good contribution for the others and and, and even people that are not so close uh, we if we have a good example of life we can inspire others and yeah. it's what you are doing as well and and people here for example uh, says that that is so cool look look at this comment from from Leisha. Uh, she's telling, I love the Excel Turbo interviews because it shows more than Excel 2. It shows real life, all the work done behind the scene. Uh, would you like to become successful with Excel? You need to work hard. Uh, and you, you, Roger, Thank you, you are, <laughs> you are working very hard. Um, and no, not now. I, I, I say to everybody, I'm very lazy, very, very lazy. So I always look for the easy way to do things. <laughs> and I only like to do things once. I don't like to have to repeat doing them. That's why you are a good programmer. Uh, uh, Bill Gates uh, told this once uh, that that lazy people tend tend to be good programmers. <laughs> well, that's right. If you write a piece of code, write it in such a way that you can reuse it somewhere else. Don't write uh -huh. it somewhere again. <laughs> recently, uh, recently, I was participating of an interview, uh, but I, I was a, I was the guest, and uh, people asked me about automation. I told automation is a mix of laziness and <laughs> smart <laughs> and smart thinking, <laughs> and, and and she asked me, oh, don't don't tell this. Uh, you are not lazy. Uh, I I told, but. If, if you think, yes, if you get lazy behavior with uh, smart thinking, you have the automation because we don't want to do the same thing again and again and again. No. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, that's so cool. Okay. You see, I, I, I'm too lazy to maintain a proper website for myself or to <laughs> run a blog or do anything else. And my very, very, very good friend, Deborah Delgleish, who runs contextures.com, brilliant site, <laughs> answers for everything on there. She kindly invites me to write some guest articles. So I put them up there, and I've got nothing to do with the administration. I haven't <laughs> got to run the site. I haven't got to do anything. Um, wait, wait. Last, oh, sorry, year, sorry. La la last year, I think there were... 358,000 reads of my articles on that site, and there were 25,700 downloads of tutorials. And I didn't have to do anything. Brilliant. <laughs> cool. So, so <laughs> cool, so cool. Yeah, uh, but uh, I know that you got a new camera and mic. So, yes. so, so, so we, we want we want videos now. <laughs> <laughs> Too lazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm sharing for for the videos, and, and they will be so fun because it's so good to, to talk to you. I, I'm looking here at the the timer. Uh, we are half an hour talking about the interview. We have a demo a demo oh. to, to to start, but we could be all the the entire video talking uh, just. The, the interview part because it, it's so cool so i'm sure i'm pretty sure that if you start to make videos they will be so cool to watch that people will love so uh, i'm sure I, I will be the, the one of the first to, to be there writing and putting comments i i really encourage you to to do the videos as well and 
what, what, one thing I'd like to say just before I start showing a, a few bits and pieces, um, or two things actually. Firstly, Multiplan. <clears throat> when Microsoft brought out Multiplan, Multiplan had columns and rows, but all of the columns were numbers. So your cell referencing was not A1, it was 1-1. One, one. And um, that didn't go down too well, and they, that's why they had to change it when they got to Excel, because people were so used to what Dan Bricklin had started with VisiCalc, with the A1 notation. But the thing is that when you look at uh, anything, and especially if you look at um, the index function, you always have to give the row dimension first, followed by the column. So Dan Bricklin, all those years ago, got it totally wrong. It should not have been A1, it should have been 1A, 1B, 2C, 3F, whatever. The row number first followed by the column letter. So, Dan, you got it bloody well wrong, and we've had to follow that thing ever since. <laughs> <That's> my soapbox. <talk. laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. But we cannot row back now. They, they no, have no, to no, continue. No, 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 no. There's no way changing it now. We have to yes. stay with it. Because everybody <laughs> recognizes it. But it, it is wrong. It's fundamentally wrong. Uh, uh, and the other thing I wanted to say was, like yourself, I'm taking part in this uh, big conference online later in July. I'm doing the presentation there, which will pull together some of the bits and pieces I'm going to show you shortly. But if you want to see the real thing and producing the ultimate dynamic crosstab report, watch my session on there. And I'm, yeah, sure, that... I'm sure you'll make the links available on that for everybody. Uh, Cristiano. Yes, I'm going to write here on the screen. And uh, the name of the event is Excel Virtually, two L's, Virtually. Let me let me copy and paste because I, I'm using a really, really small screen here today. So they can see here now if I do this. So this is the, the event and we have some some famous speakers here right on this screen uh, uh, alessandro trovato from brazil bill jaden bob Unlis, and the list is so huge oh, this this is charles william that that uh, roger was talking about just a few minutes ago i'm here on this yeah. side and the list is so huge that sometimes, depending on the connection, it takes some time to, to load the, all the, the pictures. I'm using the screen sharing. So, uh, well, Roger is here as well. Here. I, I, I don't think I crop up. Well, there I am. Yeah. I'm on the, on the Thursday at um, 1600 hours um, British summer time. Yeah, cool, cool. They have the program here, and we encourage people to sign up here because this will be huge. So this is the list, and, and here is all the content that you are going to learn from all those guys. I really encourage people to to subscribe and, and sign up, and well, uh, it's just follow the link. <laughs> It, it, it's very, very cheap, and all of the proceeds are going to charity. So yes, yes. That's, um, that's a good thing. Yes, okay, cool, cool. so you'd like to meet, show you a few things in Excel now, so instead of yes. yapping about me, let's sort of look at some stuff. So can you see uh, my screen? Not yet. Mm -hmm. Screen sharing. 
I cannot see it yet. I can see my screen, but not yours. Let me see the comments while you, you share the screen. We have Marcos Ripper here from Brazil. Bom dia, good morning. Uh, we, we have Hiran de Silva. Uh, he had Multiplan in oh, three. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes. And then uh, Alicia is telling out also that Excel Turbo is global because we have a lot of people from different countries here watching. And I, I cannot see the screen yet. I'm just trying it again. Hang on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Let me stop sharing mine and then you have the screen share button below. Let me see the other comments. Yes, so guys, uh, make sure you get the opportunity to, to learn on the Excel Virtually Global. This is an event with more than 50 hours of content. If you see here again, you will, you will see so great names that you it, it's impossible to, to watch the non-stop content because uh, they are a sequence so it, it starts on on 5 p.m on, on 21 july and i'm here right on the beginning i'm very happy for this with the data streamer that I'm going to show this here that I have here on my hand. Let me put on the screen here. This kind of device is connected to Excel. What can they do on Excel? This is the, the thing that we are going to show on, on the event on my talk. And Roger is, is there also with Oh, I can see here some screen. Uh, I can see now. Let me put on the spot your your speech, and then we start the demonstration. Here is Roger Govier with the dynamic cross tab report. Uh, it will be really cool. It will be, be really cool. Uh, we have some friends here. Ivai, uh, hello, good morning, bon dia. Good, good. Christian is registered and waiting for the event. Cool. Let me put the, the screen. You can open Excel. I can see here, Roger, your screen. Let's start the demonstration. And then we have also Mauricio from Colombia. Hello from Colombia. Hello, Mauricio. <coughs> <laughs> can we start Excel now? Uh, I can see something move, moving here. Let me put on the screen. Okay. Cool. What do you bring for us today, Roger? Well, I thought we'll have a little look at some of the new dynamic array functions. Mm. I'm going to try and make this a bit bigger for you. I don't know if you can see that. Let's shut the header down and a bit more space. Right. I've got here just a data table of some random data that was created. It's about a few thousand rows there, I think. And um, as you know, we can do simple calculations. So if I want to get the total value, I can say sum the name of the table and the column value. And equally, I can do a sum ifs. If I have some names here and some months here, I can then pick up the total of the sales for that person for that month. Can you see the formula, okay, Cristiano? Yes. Or do you need some if, some, yes, I see some ifs coming from TB Sales 2017. Uh, I see the value, the month, and the name, and NH. And yeah. I'm using a, a small screen, so I'm sure that people from the cell phone will be able to see as well. Okay. Now, you could do the same thing without tables. You could have just 
an ordinary list. And with a list, though, you need to make up some named ranges to work out what they are. And again, I've, I've got a, a name called underscore value, which is picking up the range of data from there. And I can then just do some value. And I can do similarly some ifs here based on the same thing. You'll note here that all of my names are start with an underscore. And the reason I do that is when you use the formula autocomplete, if I type equals sum, and if I just put an underscore, oops, might help I put underscore, I then see just a list of all the named ranges that I've set up. And I can point to them nice and easily. So just a little tip that if you start off your any named ranges with an underscore, it makes it very easy to find them when you're creating formulae. Oh. So, okay, that stopped because I didn't actually complete the calculation I was doing. Um, just while we're here, in, in case people don't know very much about named formulae, it's under the formulas name manager is where you create them. And people call them named ranges, but really I call them named formulae because each one of them is a formula. And it's the formula which is pointing to the range that is covered. So they're named formulae. And um, this one I cannot see very well because this one is okay. small. I can see index. Oh, much better now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lots so, of names using formulas coming yeah. from the workbook. Mm -hmm. Right. Let me just stop that one second. Windows uh, mm -hmm. escape. Yes, but that's that's where you find them anyway. But mm -hmm. um, hopefully, because I've copied them down here, you can actually see them. Oh, so they are the same. Okay, okay. I've got a formula underscore FC that stands for first column. And uh, I'm matching true for not is blank data list row two. And that will be return me the answer of two because this particular table starts in column B, which is column two. And the same way I can calculate what the first row is, what the last column is, what the last row is. So to define the whole table, or the whole list, I should say, it then becomes a question of indexing. I've just chosen 10,000 rows. You could do the whole sheet if you wanted. Starting from the first row, first column, colon, index, 10,000 rows, last row, last column. Mm. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I see. And again, I have found when I've done teaching of groups, a lot of people don't realize that you can use index either side of the colon to define a range. A lot of people use offset to define ranges. I absolutely hate offset. It's a volatile function, and I hate nearly all volatile functions. But using index which is non-volatile you can usually achieve the same thing so and again if i just want to know pick up what's in the value column i gotta say, just say index column j which is what it is first row plus one which is the one below the title two same column last row yeah, this cool. is really cool. 
Really cool. And then the same thing for defining month and defining name and defining product. So therefore, just like I could with a table, I can do sum value, and that gives me the whole sum of that column. Or I can do a sum ifs, value is what I want to sum, where the month is equal to P23, which is this cell here, which says Barry. And the, sorry, the month is this cell here, which says 01 January. And the name is Barry in N24. Now, in, in this case, I've actually gone against my normal rule. I know it doesn't make any difference in the sum ifs uh, formula. Um, in, some ifs will take the arguments in any order you like. But I tend to always, in most of my formulae, I obviously was too much of a hurry with this one, I've gone and put the, um, put the column reference first, then the row reference second. Whereas I normally stick to the same rules as with index, and I give the row reference first and then the column reference. But it works either way. Okay. So those are the things which you can all do right now with either named ranges or with tables, exactly the same sort of thing. But you could also just create a name to refer to a table column. So here, month, month, two, month two, I've defined as being Table sales 2017, which is this table, mm -hmm. column month. So instead of having to type all of that into a formula, I just have to put in underscore mon2. Because you, you, you are getting the, the benefit of the tables. So it's e an easy way of bringing a column instead of a formula. And then you create the name pointing to the, the notation of the table, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. So then, instead of having to write, as I have here, look, that big sum ifs formula, I can write in the same way sum ifs value two, if name two is N13 and month two is P12. I've had to use month two and name two because I've already used mon and name elsewhere on the, another part. So, but normally I would just have month and name there. But um, but you can see what I mean is that instead of having to type all that out in the formula, I can have it much much shorter. Mm -hmm. As I said, I'm a lazy person. I don't like to have to do too much. <laughs> and to me also, that's much easier to read. It's easier for me, certainly, to read that than to read that. And I hate it also when some people have got great long sheet names. And then, you know, in a formula, you'll have long sheet name, exclamation, cell reference, colon, cell reference. And, you know, before long, you've got a formula which is about three miles long. And it takes yes. a lot of effort to try and read it and understand it and mm -hmm. more effort to maintain it, to make sure you're not going to make mistakes. So I really think it's a good idea to use these, these names, even with tables. Yes. Right. Yes. Well, that, that was just an aside. What I wanted to come on and talk to you about now is some of the new dynamic formulae which we've got. We're going to look at unique and sort. Unique is great. Well, they're all great, all the dynamic formulae. Mm -hmm. uh, can, you know, let me put the screen size up a bit for uh, you. Better, better. Thank you. Can you see it okay now? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Right. I mean, th this cell is, is only just saying formula text of B12. So the formula that's sat in there. That's what the formula is. So I just put it up there so it's nice and big for you to be able to see it. So I've got another, just, just to have it on the same page, I've clipped a piece of my big table and I put it here. It's only 
only a few rows, and I called that underscore TB short. And again, all of my tables, I start with an underscore for exactly the same reason as I was saying with the names. When you're mm -hmm. doing a formula, it's so quick then to be able to find your list of table names instead of having to think and search around for them. So, unique TB short name looks at the whole list of names and produces the unique list from them. So, instead of and I could have done that on the, the, the big list, which would be 3,000 rows, I would just pick out the people who exist on there. And that formula only exists in that cell. If I come to this cell here, you'll see, you, know, you can't see it too well on this screen, I guess, but that is grayed out. The formula is not actually there, but this is the cell with the formula. And there's this area around it, that's what's called the spill range. So that formula there spills down just as far as it needs to go to give you that list. Now, if there's something which is in the way, if I go and type the word hello in there, I get an error. This is one of the new errors, hash spill error. So this is Excel telling me, look, I want to extend to get my answer right down to there, and there's something sat in the way, and I can't do it. So I'm going to give you a spill error. So we just go and delete hello from there. Bang. Now I get it. Okay? Okay. Now, the same way, if I went and put a new name in here, if I typed in and said we had Zach, immediately, Zach's gone in there. So the list is extended because we've got a different name. Yes, yes. And we don't need to update. No. Nope. It's really dynamic. It's yes. Automatic, yeah. Now, equally, I've done the same thing here just for the product. So I got a list of the products that exist. Now, oh. you, can, you can pass unique to another uh, function. So there's also a new function called sort. So if I say sort unique table short name, I've now got the list of names in ascending alphabetic order. Mm -hmm. But the sort function, you can also change the direction. It would default to one, which would be ascending but if you make that a minus one it is descending so if i yeah, get rid I can, of that one, I, I can see the the zach uh in, in on the beginning and now yeah, zach zach in, down the end because we mm -hmm. saw it the other way and now we got barry don jack james so they're in ascending alphabetic order mm -hmm. But if you make the final parameter a minus one instead of a plus one, you get them in descending order. Cool. So, of course, there are two definitions of unique. In the example above, we are showing just the single instance of a value from a range which contains multiple instances. But some people say that list is not unique and unique items are just those that occur once well the full syntax of the unique function and i've just copied it out there for you is you can say the array that's the range you want to be uh, range you want for unique not sorted the column false is zero omitted or unique to be by row and exactly once true to give values occurring exactly once or false or a zero to it or omitted to give all oh why have i gone and got a calc function thing there what have i done uh, did, did, did. is it since i had in zach in there 
Let's take that back and put in consignment. Mm -hmm. Now I've done something stupid there, so let's let's forget that guess for the moment. Um, mm -hmm. Again, the 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 full thing for the sort is you can say whether you want to sort the range. The index you can either sort it by row or by column and the sort order can either be ascending or descending yeah sorry that's the range to be is the range to be sorted the column you want to sort by or the row number you want to sort by the direction of the sort and whether you want it to be sorted by row which is normal or sorted by column. So here, I just sorted this by column five product. So we got all that data now is sorted alphabetically by the product. Mm -hmm. Here, I've sorted the whole table, but by the column header. So now the columns are in alphabetic order. So whereas we had date, name, customer, we've now got color, customer, date, month, name, etc. So the sort function is a powerful new function. You can just use it very, very simply, or you can use all of the parameters to it to do all sorts of different things. Okay. Cool, so cool. So yes. that's sort and unique. <laughs> yeah, and, and using together names, we can even get more even more benefit from this new family of functions. Yeah. Yes. So, so cool. but also we've got transpose. Mm. Okay, blow this up a bit for you. Now We've always had transpose, but in the past, for transpose, you'd have to actually do it as an array formula, defining the range that you wanted to put your answer to first. But now we don't have to. Here, I said transpose, sort, unique, table sales 2017, name. So it's taken the unique list of names, and instead of putting them down the page, we've got them going across the page. And the same thing with the um, product, and the same thing with color. And of course, if in my sort I put a minus one, I could have them in reverse order. So you can see from this that we're beginning to get an easy way to set up what our cross-tab report would look like. Because if we put here, just sort the names, we've got the list of names of the people in the table. And if we do a transpose sort there, we've got them going the other way. So we can now put formulae in here to fill in the various values. Now, I'll do that in just a moment, but I wanted first of all to point out something is that that cell there is where the thing is, is actually called the spill anchor. And if I said equals that cell, but I put a little hash sign after it. It said, by giving the hash sign, we're telling Excel that C19 is the first cell in a spilled array. That is the anchor cell. So by typing that in there, it means it gives you that same list over here. Cool. And I call that, this is the new kid on the block. 
<laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, there's a question here uh, from Christian. Uh, he is asking about. Let me remove the. Okay, okay. Uh, Christian is asking. Firstly, uh, he says dynamic arrays are really a game changer. Too bad they don't work well with tables yet. Roger, do you have some info? Whatever Microsoft has something planned regarding this. <laughs> what they don't work with tables, but they do. I've just been using them with tables. Yeah, yeah, we have some incompatibility when using inside tables. Uh, it's what uh, probably he is asking because you you are getting data from tables. Yes, yes, but I think Christian is uh, talking about using them inside, so we will have the the spill error. Uh, if it's the same thing, uh, so Christian, you can go to this thing here. I know a guy who wrote on Excel user voice to the title is convert dynamic arrays into table, but inside the comments, the conversation has changed to work together. And this is the link here. And this is the guy here, a very boring guy called Cristiano. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can vote there if it, it's the same thing that I understand here from the question. You can see the the user voice suggestion and and vote there. But we have convert, a delay. Convert dynamic arrays into tables. Yes, yes. To to use inside, uh, not not like the the demonstration, but but I think. Christian is asking the same thing that I have have problem when I try. Uh, today I know that they are not compatible to use in that way, but uh, if we use inside, we have some problem because they are not compatible. Too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I I I I'd like at some stage, and perhaps you can send me an example, Christian, of what what you're trying to do. So I'm I'm not quite figuring out that at the uh -huh. moment. <laughs> but but it, in terms of if it doesn't work at the moment, mm -hmm. don't hold your breath waiting for it to work. I don't uh -huh. care how much we put up on user voice. I don't think that's going to happen. If we put on the reason, user voice? The reason is there are problems with tables. We know there's lots of things that are wrong with tables. Mm -hmm. And getting them to work on protected sheets would be absolutely wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we've been asking about that for a long time. But I think deep down under the hood, tables have got some problems. And they weren't built from scratch. They worked from the list object, which got introduced in Excel 2003. And I think when they look under the hood, they found there's a bit of a can of worms there. And um, it would take a massive rewrite and a big engineering resource to change it, which is why some of the things that have been asked for on user voice for tables haven't yet happened. It's not that Microsoft aren't aware of the problem. They are. But fixing it isn't the simple little tweak that everybody thinks it, it, you know, it would be. It should be, but it's not because of the way they're actually constructed. So... If you're now going to add, trying to make something of the new dynamic, dynamic arrays to work within tables, then, geez, that's just not going to happen unless tables are sorted out themselves, first of all. Mm. That's my view. <laughs> totally unofficial. <laughs> not for Microsoft. <laughs> I might be an FA, but I've got no inside knowledge. They share a few things with us, but not oh. all the latest developments. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, he, he's confirming his spill formulas inside tables are not working. Yes, yes, and thanks for the link. Yeah, so yeah. so it's the same. Uh, when you tell me that you are not figuring out the the reason to do that, uh, actually for me it was uh, like experiment, just just to have fun. Uh, I didn't uh, had a 
I haven't uh, a real need to to do that. Oh, but I see. You just experiment. Well, yeah, when when they released the the dynamic arrays, I started to try to to break them. <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's push this to the limits, and, and okay. then I I tried to to put inside the tables, and then they they broke. Uh, it happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. cool. Really well, cool. I I, I I absolutely love um, advanced filter. Advanced uh -huh. filter something that's been in Excel since virtually day one. And I use it a hell of a lot. But if you output from advanced filter to a table as your destination, it won't necessarily work correctly. And the reason is that advanced filter was written long, long, long before tables were ever imagined. And therefore, it doesn't understand the table's structure. So, for example, if the advanced filter was going to produce you a result of, let's say, um, 25 rows, and your table was only um, that you're outputting to was only 10 rows deep. You'd get the 25 rows in the result, but the table wouldn't expand to pick up those additional 15 rows. Yeah. You would have to resize the table afterward. But if your table length is 25 rows, and the range that you're extracting to it is only 10 rows, that's fine, because it won't be outside, but you'll have some blank rows in your table. So when I use advanced filter, I normally don't ever filter to a table. I just filter to an ordinary list. And then I use a dynamic name range to pick up what I want. Anyway, that's just an aside for why some things won't work. You know, you've got to think about where these things came from and what stage of development they were they were at when these things uh, mm -hmm. came about. Um, yeah, I was going to go on just to say about what I call regard the new kid on the block. <laughs> so, <laughs> where, whereas, and we've already talked about this on some of the other sheets, um, you can define different ranges. There could be a static range. It could just be a single cell. Um, but As I've said, you can create this range, and then the C14 hash, the hash symbol, tells Excel this is a thing with a spill range. But that C14 hash, that is just as much a range as if you defined a range by any other method. So here I've said just index C14 hash comma five. So that's going to pick up the fifth element of that column. One, two, three, four, five, which indeed is Paula. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the hash now is just as much the definition of a range as defining it by any of the other methods I was talking about or by a table. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, very useful. We can create ranks with this technique, and, and this yeah. is very useful. So so here now, you see, I, I've done this sort unique product. So I've got the list of the unique products. I've done a transpose, a transpose of the names. So I've got the names going that way. And in here, I've just got one formula, which is, uh, you know, you, you can see it down here better. That's that's where the formula is writ written. So that one formula there is now spilling in two directions. It's spilling down for the length of that range, and it's spilling across for the length of that range. 
So it's just one formula. And if I go and type hello in the middle of there, bang, I've got my spill error again because Excel mm. is telling me, hey, I want to go up there and I want to go down there and you're sat in my way. So get <laughs> out of it. And then I can do my job. <laughs> yeah? Good. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. The famous right. is spill the new error, the new kid on block. <laughs> uh, cool. Yeah, I, I'm talking about formula. I, I, I'm looking formula. Be, before uh, you, you finish, I have another thing to, to ask you to show then, if possible. But uh, feel free to to to, con to have the, the conclusion. I, I, I guess I we'll say here that in the same way as I was showing the index function just now. I've just mm -hmm. said index T31 hash, which is this cell here, comma three, comma eight, right? Mm -hmm. So the third row, one, two, three, the eighth column, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12,484. Cool. So D31 hash is that whole range there. Uh-huh. I can see it, it's referred to the the same number uh, below Barry. It's D thirty one. Yes, the first yeah. corner. Yes, that, yes. That, that is that is the actual array formula. Yeah, the sum ifs mm -hmm. formula. That's this one. And cell D thirty one, which is there. And then if you index D thirty one hash comma three comma eight, it'll go and pick you up the 12484 which is that figure there I mean if I change if I change that to six comma nine 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 four four which is that figure there cool oh very cool yes the they will love this and um, people who are not uh, involved with uh, new dynamic arrays they they have to have the the 365 uh, which not off anymore now it's microsoft 365 so they will have the always the brand new excel version to test and, and to enjoy the the new features like this uh, this is really cool I, I love so much the the new dynamic arrays as well this is really there, nice. there was something you were going to ask me, uh, Cristiano. Yes, yes. Before we finish, we, we passed a little bit of one hour is not problem. But I know that you have uh, your your time to, to do other things because you are very busy. But before we leave, uh, I would like to to you to show something that I learned from you. And maybe uh, somebody didn't notice you have the formula bar with big letters and i i was so happy when you teach that to me <laughs> because let, let me put on the spot again so so they can see uh, the the letters the the font is huge it's not the common formula bar that we are so familiar to so could you tell them how how did you do this yeah. effect because uh, this is excellent for let me remove my logo from from the front of the the excel because this for all the excel instructors this is a good thing to know so file options and use this as the default font and i've got sego ui Font size 18. You can make it whatever size you want, but I've chosen 18. And having done that, that's what gives me size 18 for there. But I make the font size for the rest of the sheet um, absolutely, you know, normal. Uh, so I'm, I'm just font size 11 for the rest. But because I'd set that as 18 as being the default, it makes the formula bar much bigger. Yes, the drawback is that when we open a new new spreadsheet, we have to change the, the font size again and again and again. Yeah. 
Yeah, but we have a good advantage when making demonstrations. I'm I'm going to use this. Uh, <laughs> my Excel is is not the default font anymore, and because of this, I, I learned this from from you, and I, I'm very happy. Uh, thank you very very much. I, I'm putting this on the screen here, so everyone will be able to understand. And we are almost in in the end. I I would like you to. to give the the final words to, to them uh, especially let me put this on the screen again uh, roger is living from excel since the 90th year uh, well this is amazing because uh living from excel exclusively it's a great achievement so uh, it's always good to learn from you but before the final words let me put on the screen again uh the event that everyone must uh, run to, to, to at least see the, the program and then, of course, if possible, uh, to register as well because this will be huge. Uh, it's coming in July, so don't miss it <laughs> because Roger will be there as well. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll give you one just little preview. I'm not going to show you how I've done it, uh -huh. but I'll just show you what you'll see if you watch that session okay uh -huh. uh, let me see if i can find it quickly bum, bum, bum. i didn't put it in that folder and no not that one not that one oh, christian that one? is complimenting here um a very important information about the dynamic arrays uh, regardless the update channel they are available on the excel online for those on the subscription system the 365 very cool very cool thank you christian this is really important to see right then can you, can, can, can you see that screen there not yet we have oh, a small sorry, delay on. just a moment i need I oh. another where did I have to do it? Hmm. Uh, yes, because it was the end, so you you stopped the, the screen I sharing. Stopped, I stopped screen sharing, yeah. Yes, yes. So we have a bonus. Let's see what it is. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's appearing something here. Okay. All right. Can you see uh -huh. it? Yes, yes. Right. So, here you'll just choose which table do you want to look at. What do you want to be your row? Well, we'll make it region. What do we want the column to be? Let's make it the color. And what do we want to use for the thing? Do you want value or quantity? Well, let's choose quantity bang mm. Cross that report. totally totally flexible <laughs> this is and, really cool and even more do you want the thing sorted by name or by value do you want it ascending or descending and what do you want the calculation to be well let's have it as the average cool really cool that is the ultimate dynamic Cross <laughs> cool. So and this I, is a, a bonus from the <laughs> the events, the the thing that you going are going to show on the Excel that, virtual. That's why I'm going to teach people how to build that in that session, and having built it, I can guarantee you, you can drop any table you like into this file, and as long as you just add that table name. In this column here, without changing any other formula, that whole thing mm. for whatever table you put in there. Cool. 
Really cool. So uh, they, they cannot miss this because this will be really cool <laughs> with lots of content that we will take a long time to absorb everything and put everything in practice. Yeah. This is a highly valuable opportunity for everyone. So thank you very much for coming. I'm very happy to, to talk to you uh, again. And now in a live video like this, is is really good uh, to talk uh, about Excel, that, that is something that we like so much, but also to hear from you the experience, the, the journey behind, uh, like Lija said on the beginning, uh, is always fascinating to learn how people got the achievements. This is so inspiring. And I would, oh, I put a symbol here. Don't worry about the symbol. Uh, this is not so so important, the, just a small mistake. But uh, it's always so inspiring to, to hear all the things back because we have some hardships on the, the middle of the way and sometimes we, we think lots of things uh, in front of the, the challenge, challenges that we face. So thank you very much for, for telling us your story. And I would like you to, to have the full screen and the microphone just for you now to give them some final words for all the, the people who are going to watch the recorded session because this will stay, stay available on the channel. It's live today, but it, it will be recorded. So I would like you to give the, the final words for them. Feel free to, to say the announcements, uh, advice, what do you want? Okay. Thank you, Cristiano. Thank you. <laughs> uh, well, thank you everybody who's listened to this. And I'm sorry I may have rambled on a bit long, but um, that thing I was showing at the end with the dynamic cross tab report, my f first and go-to method for analyzing any data is still and always will be pivot tables because you haven't even got to write a single formula. And as I said, I'm lazy. I don't like doing things. So I would use pivot tables first and foremost. But since the new array formula came out, I thought I'd better have a bit of an experiment, see if I can make something which will work a bit like a pivot table, but be easy to use. And they say, only do it once, only do it once, that's all. But all of you out there, just keep on using Excel. It's a brilliant, brilliant product. I love it to bits. I will be using it until my dying day, I'm sure. I'm not sure I'll get into all these fancy new things. I'm not, I'm not an Excel MVP anymore, by the way. I'm an Office Apps and Services MVP, but that means nothing to me. I only know Excel. I don't know the rest of it. I'm too old to learn about flow and... JF, JF scripting and all the rest of it. I'm not going to bother with that. VBA will see me out. But I love it, Bill. I love you people. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for uh, listening to me today. Thank you, Cristiano, for inviting me. It's been great to meet you all and um, keep on excelling. Okay, thank you very much. Good to see you, Roger. Thank you. Good to see Bye -bye. you all. Bye-bye now.